everyone, it's Froggy, and today we're going to be talking about cross-stitching. So this is a hobby that I do pretty frequently. Um, I really enjoy cross-stitching. I think it's a lot of fun. So I figured that I would share with you how exactly I do it. And um, yeah, maybe if you guys are interested in trying it out for yourselves, you can go ahead. It's a lot of fun. It's makes really great art. You can use it either uh, on its own to put in a picture frame or you can even do it on clothing to make like nice little patches which is something that I particularly am very fond of doing. So I'm going to quickly show you everything that you're going to need and tell you a little bit of how to do it and then I will forward it to the end of the cross stitch and show you how to finish it off. So. The first thing that you're going to need is an idea. So you're going to want to find yourself a pattern. You can either start with a starter kit and you can get those at any craft store, or you can just do like I did, find yourself an interesting pattern online and start from that. So the way that you can find patterns is you can either purchase a pattern, so you can purchase them from Etsy.com, or you can do what I did and look on Google for a free pattern. So you can either look for cross stitch patterns in like specifically, if you've got a character or a picture type in mind, then you can type that with cross stitch pattern. You can look for pixel art that'll work the same, or you can look for uh, anything along those lines. Voxel works too. Um, and then once you've found a pattern that you're happy with, the next thing that you're going to need to do is go out and buy your supplies. So you can get those from pretty much any craft store. We have a Michaels here. This is usually where I'll get my stuff. You can find it online as well. So the first things that you're going to need is embroidery floss. So you're going to want to pick up some skeins of embroidery floss. So this is one of the ones that I'll be using. This is typically what it looks like here. So it's going to have the two stems. It's going to say embroidery floss across it. And you can get them in pretty much any color. Like I've got a whole array of colors here. Some of them have been used already. Um, but I know what I need. And I've got a huge drawer full of skeins of embroidery floss. So usually that works out pretty well for me but you're gonna need specifically embroidery floss. You can't do this with regular sewing thread because it's not gonna be thick enough. The next thing that you're going to need is a needle. So this is what you're gonna be doing everything with. It's not the same as a regular sewing needle either. It's slightly thicker. Usually you'll be able to find it with all of the rest of the cross stitch stuff, including the embroidery thread. So the embroidery floss is pretty much the same floss that you would use for if you were doing um, needle needlework or anything like that. Typically it's all the same floss, so there you go. Um, the next thing that you're going to need after that, or one that I find very helpful, you don't technically need it, but it is really helpful, is an embroidery hoop. So it's just usually a wooden or plastic hoop. They come apart and then you would put the material on the inside hoop, which is this one here with nothing on it, and then you put this one around it and it just kind of snaps into place and it's fine. It's got a little adjustable bit up here so that way you can adjust how tight you want it around your material and you're good to go. Um, then you're going to need something to stitch onto. So if you are planning on just doing a picture, like a nice starter picture instead of working on material at first, which is usually the way that you'll want to do it, you'll need to get yourself some Ida cloth. So typically it looks like this here. It's it usually comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, usually I'll go for a white just because it'll be a, like a nicer, easier background, but you can grab any color that you want. I also usually go for 14 count Ida cloth, which just means that it's going to be 14 squares per inch. And it is a little bit thicker than regular cloth. It's very stiff as well, so it makes working on it a lot easier. Um, but it's all basically this. It's just gonna have a bunch of tiny little holes in it. And that's it. Or if you are stitching onto material, clothing, whatever, then you're going to want to grab either like a, you know, whatever material you're going to be using. So you can do t-shirts or hoodies or jeans. Typically I'll use t-shirts, but right now I'm making little squares because I want to do a quilt. So I've just got myself a little square of fabric. And then to sew onto that, you're going to want to grab something like this here which is this stuff here. So it is a 14 count um, cross stitch fabric, 
Uh, the brand that I typically use is, what is it, Ch Charles Craft. So, you know, it just looks like this. It's a little package like this, and then it'll give you your cloth that looks like this. It's gonna have the blue and white, but it's the same thing as the Ida cloth, so it's 14 count as well. If you're doing this onto clothing, you're also going to want to get yourself a backing to be able to sew onto. Um, they do sell backing at the store, usually with the uh, cross-stitching embroidery stuff. So basically the backing, I don't have any on hand right now, but it's this material that is quite soft. Typically you can iron one side of it and it helps you to make patches, um, but if you're sewing it onto clothes, really you just need it as a backing so it's something soft for the thread to catch onto and it's going to not be as irritating on your skin because it can, the threads can be a little bit rough, so the cotton from it helps to absorb a bit of that roughness and make it a little bit softer so that way you're not going to get any kind of like irritations or rashes from it rubbing up against you and it'll hold it in a lot better so that way when you wash it you'll be good um but yes yeah, so that's pretty much it oh yes and of course you're going to want to get yourself some sewing bobbins sewing pins these little pins you know these ones with the little bulbs on the end i don't know how well you can see it but it's mostly just so that way you, you can pin this onto your cloth material um, but this is only needed these guys are only needed if you're going to be sewing onto uh, material rather than Ida cloth so uh, the next thing that you're gonna want to do is since I'm going to be doing this onto material uh, the next thing that you're gonna want to do is place your eh, canvas stuff onto your fabric and then you're going to want to pin it into place like so so you can see how it's pinned in at the corners and then I can go ahead and put this into my fabric loop so you just put this on top and then set this guy on top of that like so so it's all nice and comfy in here very easy Another thing you might want to pick up for yourself is a thimble, because you will probably stab yourself a bunch of times with a needle. It is a very annoying thing. I've got calluses growing on this one finger because I've stabbed myself so many times, and yeah, it's not fun. Um, <laughs> so especially if you're a beginner and you've got really soft skin, I definitely recommend grabbing a thimble, at least for your index finger, because you will be pushing the needle through and it can be really difficult sometimes especially if you're doing it through material like this if you're doing it through the Ada cloth you don't have to worry as much as long as you're a little bit more careful you're fine but when you're doing it through this stuff it can be very very difficult especially when you start getting into parts of the thread work that are already covered in thread having to go through the thread as well as the material as well as the cloth it's very difficult so when you're pushing you can end up hurting yourself so just be careful of that so the next thing that you're going to want to do after you get your material into your embroidery hoop is to figure out what the center of this is and mark it out usually i'll mark it with a little bit of pencil and then go to your pattern figure out where the exact center of your pattern is and start with an x there just so that way you know where to start out from and you can branch out a little bit easier so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, so I figured out where my centers were. You're not gonna be able to see it very well, but I've marked it out with pencil. And I've got my pattern up so I can see where the center of my pattern is. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and cut yourself a length of thread. Now, typically you're going to want to make sure that your thread isn't super long. So typically I'll just end up making it about the length of my arm holding it in the palm of my hand and going up to my shoulder and then cutting it from there. So now I've got a length of string and with, I don't know if you can see it, but within the string there's typically, six, I'm using typically a lot, typically is my word of choice in this video. So usually there's going to be six threads, so you'll be able to use this length three times. So. What you're going to want to do is grab two pieces of the thread from this mega thread. So you see I've got two here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that properly. If I can get them to separate, that would be lovely. So I've got two bits of the string here. And you're going to want to pull it apart from the rest of the thread. If you do it too long, it will start to 
bunch up too much and it'll eventually start turning into a giant knot and then you'll have a big wad of unusable thread which you don't want so just be careful not to do it too long um, and then make sure you thread your needle so it's just gonna put it through my needle here and then usually licking your fingers and rolling it around to get it to stay together is good So now I've got my two groups of two, I've got my needle in the center of it, so right now it's a set of four. And then what you're going to want to do, and it's going to be a little bit difficult to, to see on here unfortunately, but usually these threads, ooh, maybe this one will be a little bit easier to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can pull out the eight o'clock. I don't know if this will be more helpful to you or not. No, no, this won't be helpful. So the Ada cloth is a little bit different than the eh, uh, cross-stitching canvas that I'm using for the material. So with the Ada cloth, typically how it is, is you'll have a bunch of little squares, little holes within it, and then you'll have a bigger square of fabric in the center, and you'll want to go from one little hole to the diagonal hole from it. In this one, it's all open. So you've got a bunch of little holes and then you'll have like a um, connector holes around it and then you'll have the big square in the center. So what you're going to want to do is go from one little square here. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but you've got your little squares here on the outside. You've got your connector rectangle holes here and then you've got your big square in the center. So the way that you're going to want to do it is starting from the underside, you're going to want to get your needle to go through the first little hole, pull your string all the way up and through until you've got just a small amount on the underside. And then you're going to want to go diagonally from it. So you go from this first hole past the big square center to the diagonal hole from it. Push your needle through that. Have it come out all the way on the other side. Make sure that you don't pull it too hard so that way your back end part comes out. And then you're gonna wanna go back in through the hole that is vertical or horizontal, whatever, from the first one. Pull it through. And the way that I usually do it to close these up is while this is coming through, grab the little loop that's in the back and push it over the little tufts that were there from the first time that you went through and close it into that space. That way it's gonna hold it in place so it can't move around afterwards. And then you come back to this side here, put it through again the diagonal hole and pull all the way through and that's your first X. Now typically when you're doing this, the best way to do it is to do a bunch of diagonal stitches going across first, and then once you get to the end of that color row, turn it around and go back doing the other way so that way you can finish off your square. So we'll do, we'll do the first row together because this center square is the end of the colorway. So I'm gonna go back in through that first hole that I went through, pull it all the way through, and then I'm gonna go and do a diagonal line of one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, nope. You have to be careful where you're stabbing. There we go. Three. Four. Five. And six. 
Now, did you see what I did there? So I went in from here, did the diagonal, and then I came out vertical, the one that I went into, and came out this way, and then went diagonal again, and then went vertical. So diagonal, vertical, diagonal, vertical, diagonal, vertical. And then we're gonna go vertical again. But now that I finished this color row, I'm gonna go back. So in through here, and create the X. Two. Ugh. Three. Four. Just like that. So it's not terribly difficult. It is a very easy and quite relaxing way to kill time. Plus it makes something very pretty in the end. Don't be too upset if you don't get it perfect the first time that you make one of these because it can be a little bit difficult, especially when you're starting to do bigger and bigger patterns. You can mess up your squares and your counts pretty easily, but once you start getting the hang of it, it gets to be a lot of fun, and it's just really a great time killer. It does take a couple of days to finish a bigger project. Usually if you're doing a very, very small project, you could probably knock one of those out in a day. Um, but since this one's going to be a bit of a bigger project for me, it's going to take me a couple of days. So I'm going to do a little montage of it getting completed, and then when we're done, I will show you what you're supposed to do to finish it off. So the project is complete. I'm pretty sure you guys were able to figure it out, but before I show you the final product, there's a couple of things that I really want to talk about first. So for that cotton backing, bleh, backing stuff that I was talking about earlier, this is what it looks like here. It's just a big sheet. It's got one side that's really soft and then another side that's more coarse. This is more of the sticky side that you're supposed to melt into the product. Um, if you were going to be making patches, um, I'm not entirely sure how that works in particular because I've never actually made like patches before that you can like, you know, sew onto or iron onto other things. So I've just usually sewn right onto the article of clothing. So if you're sewing onto clothing, you're going to want to have this cottony side out and then the more coarse side that you're supposed to iron facing like onto the material. And when you're um, going to be sewing it on, when you're putting your big canvas, so the one with the blue threads that I was showing you earlier, um, onto, when you're pinning it onto your article of clothing, you're gonna want to pin this as well. So make sure that you cut this out to the same size as the canvas, and then put this part on the inside of the clothing and then put the canvas on the outside of the clothing and pin all three items together before you start to sew anything on. And then once you're finished, you can cut this out so that way it is roughly the same size as your uh, stitched on artwork. So you'll just wanna cut right up close to the threads, but make sure that you're not cutting into the threads obviously. And then that way it won't irritate the skin or anything like that. So let's go ahead and continue on with this art project. So this is the finished piece here. It's a very cute oddish. So what you're gonna wanna do from here now that I've completed it is you're going to pull it out of the ring. So like this. And then you're still gonna have your canvas stuck to it. So the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is cut down the canvas to a smaller size, like so. Make sure that you fold down the fabric so that way you're not cutting it as well. So it's a much smaller size and it's gonna make this next part easier. 
So the next thing that you're going to want to do is to start pulling these little threads out. So you're gonna grab one of the threads like this and slowly tug it all the way across. It might get a little bit caught, that's normal for this kind of stuff, but you're gonna wanna start pulling it out. It'll be a lot easier on the edges where it's not actually touching any of the thread, but once you start having to pull through the thread, it can become a little bit difficult. Usually if you're really struggling, I'll take a pair of tweezers and it'll help me to grip onto it better and yank it out. You can also jostle it around when you're pulling it out so that way it'll wiggle it and make it a little bit easier to come out. If you can't get them all completely out, it's not the end of the world. They might snap and break off inside your artwork. So, It'll just make it a tiny bit stiff, which is okay until you start washing it, and then it'll it'll soften up. So it'll be a lot easier that way. But you wanna make sure that you get as many of them out as you possibly can, just so that way you'll have a nice, clean piece of artwork. Like this. So it's all gone. You can see that it's very floppy. If it's a little bit stiff, that's fine. You can go ahead and wash it. Um, you can wash these in I would recommend cold water do it with your darks and colors just in the case your thread does bleed um, if you are doing this from clothing I recommend turning your clothes inside out so that way you have the outside part facing outside or the inside part I should say facing outside and the outside part facing inside so that way you're not going to damage it but if you are just doing it straight on a sheet like this like I am you can go ahead and do it on a very gentle cycle um, and don't put it into the dryer, let it air dry, no matter which way you're doing it. Just make sure that you're letting it air dry so that way it doesn't tumble around and get messed up in the dryer. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is my little cutie here. If you are doing it on patches like I am and they do come out kind of like wrinkly and it's very stiff, after you wash it, even if it's still stiff then, you can go ahead and lightly iron it to make it more flat and it'll come out very nice. But anyway, so that's the end of this video. I'm gonna be making a whole bunch more of these little dudes. Um, if you want to see my works in a project, if you wanna see what I'm doing, you can go ahead and follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting all kinds of pictures of these and you know stuff from my everyday life as well over there. So you can go ahead and find my tag here. It's also gonna have a link I'm also going to have a link down in the description box below so that we can go click it there. Um, but yeah, so that's everything for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching!